Hello, everybody. Um, James whatever. here, story time with Dutch Mantel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, can't, I don't even know what I said. It amused Dutch, whatever it was. I've just yeah, been it, was fun. it was funny. I've just been ranting at Dutch for the last five minutes. <laughs> Oh, good times. Anyway, we've got a special episode for you. And it's about... Special. Vincent... Oh, yes. Sorry. I, I... It, it, it yeah. is special. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this man right here that you're looking at, James, got me out of bed. No, this is Saturday morning. He this got me out of bed. It's 2.40 p.m. For you. No, oh, for you. For me. Oh, for me. <laughs> yeah, but you got me up earlier than because he said we were going to start earlier. And so I got up and he had some emergency things he had to take care of. Oh, my God. But I did have time to read about our subject. All that stuff you've read that we're going to cover on this show. Oh, I yes. didn't read. I, I didn't read that. I don't know where it. I mean, I'm maybe I didn't research it enough, but it, what you sent me was more in depth. Mm. And what is our subject today, by the way? Oh, I um, hang on. I can't switch my camera around for a second. Here we go. Uh the subject, as I'm sure you'll know, everybody, because you clicked on this video and it'll have a thumbnail and a title and everything. This is one big old special about the resignation of Vince McMahon and the various allegations brought forth by a lady called Janelle Grant, who was the woman who the NDA uh, news broke, essentially. Uh, she was the woman who uh, was given... Offered, big news. Yeah. Big news. Yeah. $3 million uh, non disclosure agreement for various essential uh, horrific abuses, allegedly, that Vince Man had committed upon her, as well as John Laurinaitis, and she's also suing WWE as well. Now, we're going to get through. In fact, we're going to um, start by giving you the latest. So Vince McMahon, as we record today, so we were actually, I was actually hoping to record this yesterday and we couldn't make our schedules meet. But uh, it's even better that we've done it today because uh, very late last night, Vince McMahon officially resigned. Nick Khan sent a message out saying, I wanted to inform you that Vince McMahon has tendered his resignation from his positions as TKO executive chairman and, the, and on the TKO board of directors. He will no longer have a role with TKO group holding or WWE and Vince McMahon. Woo! Woo! Or Ric Flair. Uh, <laughs> uh, Vince McMahon's statement, he made two statements, but this is reiterating the first as well as adding to it. He says, I stand by my prior statement that Ms. Grant's lawsuit is replete with lies, obscene made-up instances that never occurred, and as a vindictive distortion of the truth. He intends to vigorously defend himself, but he also says that he has resigned from the board, essentially for the sake of the board members and shareholders and stockholders and all that, whatever, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, previous news was uh, TKO res uh, responded to the allegations to Variety that Mr. McMahon does not control TKO, nor does he oversee the day-to-day -day operations of WWE. While this matter predates our TKO executive team's tenure on the company, we take Ms. Grant's horrific allegations very seriously and are addressing this matter internally. And one more thing that uh, we can say very late on now, uh, I'll I'll add it at the end. Slim Jim pours its advertising with WWE, and one one sponsor goes. It's like a domino effect. Many other sponsors fall with it. But in the last couple of hours since we uh, started recording, Slim Jim, after Vince McMahon has resigned, has decided to sponsor WWE and the Royal Rumble once again. Um, the so only they signed, so uh, see, uh, that's news to me. Yeah. So they signed back on. Yeah. This is this is actually hot off the press as we record this. The only other thing, and I've written this on the first page just because I'd just seen it. Ronda Rousey made a social media post, I believe, on Bruce Pritchard. So bear with me a second. Rousey wrote, "Bruce Pritchard is basically Vince's avatar. If he's still around, Vince still has." hand in the business. Vince was still running things through Bruce when he was gone before. Do you think that's true? I do think it's true. Because he is his hand-picked uh, guy on the scene, has been for, for years, so I don't see why it would change now. Mm. See, I think we were talking right before we went on air, Vince still has his people in WWE. He still has this guy here and these people here and this all the way through the office, all the way down to the production. 
I think any going forward, I think anybody who had close, close ties with Vince, I think they will be replaced. I think TKO will start with they'll try to start with a new slate as as clean as they can get it. And I think they want to clear everything with any kind of a Vince McMahon taint on it. They'll try to clear it out. Because <clears throat> if they're gonna clear house, that's that's how they'd have to do it. And the the thing about Slim Jim. When they signed off the sponsorship of uh, Royal Rumble, I said, well, that's that's going to be a domino effect. I was wrong because they've signed back on. But I bet there were some, some people talking to Slim Jim in the meantime and not wanting them to go because they cost them money. When that money starts <clears throat> escaping a, a company, hard to get it back. But I think they've maybe got ahead of it now. I hope they have uh, a lot of things to talk about. So continue with your, and the, the thing you sent me, uh, I hadn't read a lot of it. I don't know where I was. I was researching it, but you read the whole suit, right? I've read the whole suit, twice. but it, but it's not, it's not a criminal suit. No, you're it's right. A it is, it's, it's a civil suit. You're absolutely right. It's a civil suit. We will get on the law. So suit in a my, my big question is, the main question is, do I think Vince is guilty of what she's charged him ah, with? Don't 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 say it yet. Let's let's have that the big hook at the end. You can uh, pass okay. judgment okay. on. Before uh before we just get on the lawsuit itself, very quickly, do you think Bruce Pritchard's head is gonna be on the chopping block now? Personally, I do. I think he's he's gonna be gone. Anybody else who's still with WWE who you expect their jobs may, may be in danger? I don't think any of the talent would be in danger, I don't think, because they only have control over what they do. But I, th I think it's mostly office people. Kevin Dunn is already gone, because mm -hmm. we predicted that even when they, when they took over, because he, he had his detractors before endeavor took over so i think he saw it coming you know who else i i, I think saw it coming go on stephanie yes stephanie saw it coming said well i'm going to just to uh, vacate myself out of this and just separate myself from it uh who who else saw who else saw it coming do you think I think some board members, I think Kevin Dunn did. There are quite a few, uh, uh, within the suit itself, there are a number of employees who it, they call WWE employee number one, for example. They say, you know, chief officer number one. They give these euphemisms, these pseudonyms, these nom de plumes, these super K's, Dutch. Um, nom de plumes. Yeah. I, I'm surprised myself. I'm a thesaurus-like brain with all those different ways of saying it. But uh <laughs> That's a good word, nom de plumes. Yeah. So what's like it mean? That. I've seen the word a thousand times. What's it mean? Fake name. A name, a name of what? A, a fake name. Oh, okay. But, nom de plumes. Yeah. But I think uh, remember that people. It's, this is an educational experience, also, yeah. from through the University of Dutch. Yeah. That you can get a <laughs> diploma for, by the way, if you email you Dutch Dutch Mantel with two L's at gmail.com. Right now, <clears throat> I'm I'm actually going to tee this up, quite frankly, because. A lot of what you read here, and you've read all the way through my notes, haven't you, Dutch? Yes, I have. Yeah. So uh, anything in bold that I sent you are direct quotes from the suits. A lot of it is horrific. Like some it of the is. worst, some of the genuine worst crimes beyond like murder. <laughs> you know, you could you could bestow upon somebody. I, I don't think you. Okay, we know where they smoke. There's fire. Vince already paid out $17 million to women for various misdeeds that he did along the way. And I don't think this was any different. But what makes me believe this more than anything else was the one thing that she claimed he did to her that is horrific. And I've never heard it before. So stay tuned, and we'll give you that. I don't think you can make that up. 
You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> so, <clears throat> and the fact is, is that somehow, like, you sort of laugh through, like, incredulity, if nothing else. Like, it's just, you're just incredulous reading some of this stuff. But I'm going to give you, uh, we're going to try and keep it to an hour, everybody. I have said that. So, brief synopsis. I'm going to give you the most shocking allegations. Uh, Vince McMahon, John Laurinaitis, WWE are all being sued. Civil suits, as you rightly say, for undisclosed amounts. Now, the crux of the matter is Janelle Grant. Uh, one question. One yes, question yes, for yes. you. John Laurinaitis. Yes. What is he being sued for? Or, he, or is he just named in it? No, rape. Rape really? and sexual assault. Oh, yeah. The, the, now that's criminal. I know, which is that's so criminal. Which is so funny. Why? Who knows? This may lead to a criminal investigation. I mean, keep in mind that the FBI or the federal government, whatever, raided Vince McMahon's house last year. We don't know why. Could have been business. You, you know what I think they were now. Now, since this is brought up, this is me. It could be a hundred percent wrong. I think they were looking for cash money. Really? That's what I think they were looking. You. You're not allowed to have all that cash at your house for some reason. They can come in. One time I was leaving Puerto Rico and I had a bunch of cash money on me. And somebody told me, I forgot who it was, make sure it's under $10,000. I said, why? He said, well, if you go through and they see it and want to check it, if it's over 10000 they can take it, no questions asked. And you can get it back, but it'll be like six months later, and you got to get a lawyer and sue them and everything else. So I did. I remembered that. I put in like $9,600, and they found it. And they said, what's this? I said, well, I was being a smart ass. I said, well, it looks like cash money to me. How much is it? And I told them 9600 Would you follow us back here, please? Took me in a back office, a side office, and counted, made me count the money. And I counted the money out, and it's 9,600. Remember, I heard, I heard it had to be under 10,000, over 10,000, equal 10,000 or more. It could be $10,000 even, they could take it. But since it's 9,600, they couldn't take it. They gave it back to me. Good thing I heard that because I had more than ninety six hundred that was taken back in cash. Yeah, but that's traveling between countries. I mean, you, you have to declare. No, it's not. It's it's in the United States. Well, um, yes, you, you're absolutely right there. But it's the same. But like, it's inter, inter, international thing. If you had more than ten thousand, they could take it. You know, they can stop cars on the highway, and if they do search it and find more than ten thousand, they can take it right then. The highway Patrol can take it from you. Crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Good thing I've been broke all my life. Or <laughs> I'd have lost a lot of money. I uh, we right, continue. We're getting off the subject, but I, a friend of mine went to South Africa, took a load of money there, bought a house, and then he wanted to move out, but he couldn't take. I don't think he could either sell the house, but he couldn't take the money out of South Africa, so he ended up losing like fifty thousand or something like that. He could get the money out anyway. Apparently not. No, I mean he'd have to like trade it for like gold and then smuggle it up as bottom i guess if you want to take it they're really strict over there but same with if i went what to go to the states i couldn't take more than i don't know what i'd have to declare but there's a certain amount that i'd have to declare if it was over a certain amount mm -hmm. so yeah uh right let us i feel like i've gone deaf in one ear here here we go <clears throat> right we're gonna get on this so uh, fairly this is brief it's 10 pages the the, the uh, full suit is 67 pages the crux is Janelle Grant was down on a look and through a mutual friend was given Vince McMahon's number in order to get a job. Vince liked her a lot, decided to hire her, but didn't actually have a role in the company for her and in subsequent months got more hands-on, touchy-feely, and eventually initiated a sexual relationship with her. So there's a big pattern of grooming throughout here. This is a quote. During several meetings that were ostensibly about a potential job at WWE, Vince McMahon greeted her in his underwear, touched her, repeatedly asked for hugs, and spent hours sharing intimate details about his personal life. Then Grant alleges that her job, ill-defined at the time, but eventually becoming an administrative coordinator, which meant nothing, uh, because they actually couldn't really find anything for her to do. Vince just liked her in that way and was trying to find a space for her, hinged on keeping McMahon happy, or else she would be fired. 
Grant says she is now coerced into a sexual relationship with Vince and she doesn't want to be in it because she needs the money. Then McMahon starts controlling her further. There's an interesting encounter with someone identified as WWE employee number one, who was introduced to Grant as the most feared person in the company aside from Vince and Jerry McDivitt. Now, we've all got our ideas of who that may be. <clears throat> During the May 18, 2019 encounter, uh, this, is, uh, this is a quote, uh, something else by the way, uh, Ms. Grant felt coerced into engaging in sexual activity and that McMahon had trapped her in an impossible situation as she feared adverse career and personal consequences and legal retaliation if she declined his advances. McMahon stated that this is what I've been waiting for as he performed oral sex on Ms. Grant. Ms. Grant asked that protection be used and McMahon responded that there was no need to worry because he was clean. Hmm. So we Okay, the, the, main, the main question here... Mm -hmm. After hearing that coerced into a sexual relationship with Vince McMahon, and it continued, it didn't say for how long. <clears throat> the main question I think any rational person would ask, why would she not just quit and leave? That's a good and question. There's, there's, there's no answer to it. Why didn't she leave? There's I asked that same question. There's, there's two ways to look at it. Um, as, as this we, way, there's a, there's this way, way, and then there's yeah, you yeah, can look at it that way too. Yeah, no, you, well, you can look at a, a number of different angles, I guess, uh, <laughs> depending on your your view. At least in the early days, here is that did she want to be in this relationship? She obviously alleges in this that she did not. She felt coerced. Some, I'm sure, the prosecution would argue that this was her choice and. You know, you could almost argue it was a quid. Well, it quo places thing her. It places since she took, she got paid. Mm -hmm. Since she got money <clears throat> through her job, it kind of places her in the, the role of a prostitute. Now, why did she stay? I I, I can't answer it. I, I'm not asking you. Mm -hmm. You don't know either. But I think any rational person would ask that question. Well, the only thing I can say is. She must have been, and I don't know this woman. I've never even seen this woman, but it happened in 2021. 19. 19. Started now. Okay. Well, we don't even have a timeline for when she entered into the sexual relationship. Nope. May 18th, 2019. May 18th. Is that when? Okay. She has a date. Okay. So <clears throat> the uh, as I've brushed through the first quite a few pages here it's made fairly clear the alleged reason that she stayed was because she was already down on a look both her parents had died she was on her uh, uh on her ass as we'd say over here you know no money desperate for a job and then over a course of weeks and months Vince McMahon had been overly vulnerable with her you know talking about how lonely he was and basically making himself out to be a sympathetic figure and then after he's been so nice to her then at some point she feels like she needs to reciprocate. And then it's a slow building process. It's not like something that's just happened after two days. So mm -hmm. it's, it's one of those things. And as I say, it's alleged grooming uh, behavior throughout the month. So this is a slow process. Uh, next we go. A common thread in the court, pra uh, uh, court papers is Grant wants to break off the relationship with Vince. Vince refuses. Uh, Grant, Ms. Grant feels... That she needs the money, she's got nowhere else to be. Um, it's one of those things where it's stu stuck in a, uh, between a rock and a hard place. And Vince, another thing that happens is that Vince insists that the relationship must be kept quiet for the sake of appearances, even though, and this will become a common theme as well, Vince and Linda are, one, uh, long since separated, even though legally still married, but that Vince keeps now, when, telling when did they When did they separate? Years beforehand. We don't know the exact date on that. But the other thing is that Vince keeps telling people about his and Ms. Grant's relationship. And then he starts showing photos of her to other people. And then at one point he apparently claims that he has shown thousands of people the photos and videos that he has insisted that she send him. Thousands of people. How did, it, how did he show this? Now, this is another thing. How did he show the pictures in person? To some people, yes. Uh, Vince Up through the <clears throat> internet. Uh, yeah, some through I don't know text messages and sending to various people. Some, including one specific instance, 
and I think there may have been a text message as well to corroborate this, that he showed 12 people in the tech team in WWE and was regaling them with tales of Ms. Grant and his exploits. But he was the one who said, we we got to keep this a secret. Yes. Yet he was advertising it. Yes. Hmm. That, well, that kind of sounds like him. <laughs> Where there's smoke, there's fire. You can't see fire and- for the smoke. For this fire, this smoke, for this smoke, and fire. Yeah, that there's, is true. There's a lot of smoke. Um, <clears throat> the text messages then start arriving. There's a lot of them. Photos were also acquired of Grant to circulate, etc. Here's a quote again. McMahon began to degrade Miss Grant, calling her his bitch, while hinting at a fascination with having other people watch them engage in sexual activity, including other WWE stars on the roster. Well. Now, I was gone by this time. I don't ever remember hearing anything about this. But this news is so prevalent and Vince is so well known. This made every publication in the United States, possibly uh, in the English-speaking world, all of them, Mm -hmm. made the New York Times and the Post and this and that and NBC News. BBC, Independent. And Variety, and it, it made them all. Uh, it's crazy. I, I, continue. <clears throat> then the sex starts getting rough and Grant starts sustaining physical injuries. And now this is one of the, I hate to say, amusing parts of this story. Quote, notably, McMahon was most aggressive when using the certain sex toys named after male WWE wrestlers and performers. McMahon named the sex toys so that the colour of the toy matched the race of the wrestler. For example, a black dildo would be named after an African-American wrestler and a white dildo would be named after a Caucasian wrestler. In addition to McMahon's infatuation with pretending that other men, and namely certain WWE talent, were in the room with them, this was yet another incremental step in desensitising Miss Grant to his fantasy and eventual demands that she perform sexual acts for and or have sexual contact with others within WWE. W-E. So let's talk about naming dildos after wrestlers. <laughs> okay. I haven't even thought about this. What would she name? Uh, I wonder, did he use Triple H in this? Hmm. Since as his son-in-law. Ooh, that, or is that, that too that close? Like legally incestuous somehow. <laughs> That's not funny. I'm not laughing. But this sounds like Vince. And if, if if you ask me when we started this, do I think he's, here's the word, culpable in all this? I'd say not yeah, but hell yeah. Because he's paid out $17 million or $19 million already to women to sign those NDAs, which they have declared the, the plaintiff the, the lawyer has declared those were illegal anyway. Mm-hmm. So they hold no legal weight. Now, that's what they're saying. I don't know. But if he's already paid out that much money, he's guilty. Mm-hmm. He has done all. The, and what made me believe this? Well, wait a minute. You, you'll get to it in a minute. I'll get the to most it. Hor- the most horrific. I bet people said, what is the most horrific? Well, I think they know anyway. <laughs> then they will agree with us. But yeah, I think he's he's guilty of all this. And well, he, Vince is not right. Vince, I've always detected a, a vibe around Vince that something is off. I didn't know exactly what it was, but you know, even talking to him sometimes, he'd look at you and you think, "What the fuck is he thinking about?" Because that's and then you get up and leave the room and you may not even gotten an answer to the question you ask, but you got a lot of Vince's vibe because he would, when he would walk into the room, the whole room, the attitude in the room would change. So when he had that much power and I'm thinking, what if he had a a lone woman in the room and she was getting all of it? I I don't know. He may have damn hypnotized. I have no idea, but whatever it was was strong. Oh, to well, get this woman to, to go along with this. Yeah, one one text message, I don't have it here at the moment, basically said you to to uh, uh, Janelle Grant, said 
from Vince to Janelle, you better not knock on my door because if I see you, I will rape you in the office. And it's like, who the fuck writes that? That's weird. Right. Anyway, let, let's stick with these dildo things. Wait a minute. Did, did, did we ever see any of the texts? Did she text him back? Yeah, there were a couple of replies back that were sort of, um, to me, they seemed friendly enough to keep him on level, but trying to delay uh, activity, specifically with Johnny Laurinaitis, that we will get to uh, in a minute, uh, in yeah, in a few minutes at least. But let's stick with um, naming dildos after wrestlers. Who would you like? Who do you think he named Under- them after? Well, it'd be his. his... What about uh, Undertaker? So we like a oh. rotting, like decomposing dildo. <laughs> What about Shawn Michaels? Hey, Roman Reigns. Oh, the main event. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm thinking. I'm thinking like size wise. So I'm thinking Hornswoggle to Big Show. Oh, uh, Brian Danielson. So I'll be on the smaller end then. But works very uh, well. Our our Big Show. Uh, I uh, <laughs> I also like the, the black dildo for black wrestlers. So that could be like Xavier Woods to Omas. Do what? You know, like the the massive. Uh, he's like seven foot two. The the big black dude, the big giant. Oh, oh, my, almost, uh, almost, almost, yeah. yes. Oh, but he rarely shows up. Mm-hmm. So, no. Nah. <laughs> so he could be semi erect. Rarely shows up. <laughs> rarely stands up. <laughs> no, he only turns up once a month. He's okay, a, he's a special it. attraction. Okay. Right. We're gonna. I, I know we're being silly on uh, some. Now of these I, I know. Doing. Yes, but. This is a detail that only she would know. I mean, if I was a woman and I was making up stuff, I couldn't even make that up. To no. even so, that's what makes me think it's it's real that this really happened because that does sound like Vince. I'm going to. <sighs> get to i think we're getting to the the uh, bit vince's controlling nature leads him to insist that grant change her mate uh, sorry makes changes to her doctor to his doctor which is then described as alter- alternative medical establishment essentially and it ends up being miss grant being coerced into threesomes with mcmahon and a physical therapist from said establishment mcmahon would mentally manipulate her by treating her with love a physical and- therapist very physical. Is yeah. that the guy that goes on the road with Vince? No. And gives him massages after the show? What? No, I don't he'll know. Give him, he'll give him a massage at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. He has a travel Vince does, therapy, massage travels, therapy. Yes. A massage therapist used to travel with him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Jim. And he would get up and he would get up at like four o'clock in the morning and go work out, five o'clock. Because who do, who does that? Now tell me that. Probably Nobody some, that I know I've ever heard of, really. Probably someone who names his dildos after employees. <laughs> I'm never going to get over that one. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> you never heard that? No one's ever heard that. That has never happened. What's never happened? Oh, I mean, it's happened, but that no one else... Anyway, only Vince could surely think of that. Um. Here we go. So McMahon would mentally manipulate her. This is more grooming uh, behavior alleged in the suit. Treating her with love and affection, sometimes giving her gifts, referring to her as a girlfriend, and then sometimes doing a total 180 and referring to her as a porn star, his bitch, his fantasy, degrading her, and basically sexualizing her to the point that, you know, dehumanizing her. And her job descriptions were vague. Nobody ever paid attention to her. People in the office were outwardly hostile to her because obviously Vince had been telling uh, staff what was going on so she wasn't treated with any respect and according to a text me- uh, text message from Vince thousands of people had seen her naked photos and how much they all loved him it's odd anyway here's a quote okay, they haven't even started I don't even think they've started interviewing any of these people yet wait till they start doing that hmm. wait till they go to Titan Towers and say we want to talk to so and so and so and so and so and so and then they start pulling them out that's when you're going to see the big panic set in 
because everybody's going to think that they knew about it. Therefore, they were a participant in knowing about it, not reporting it. And that's going to scare people. Mm-hmm. Rightly so. It's going to scare the shit out of them. Wait till they, there's a few wrestlers named, but only, well, not named, but, you know, people think it's whoever, but that's going to scare people too. Well, I hope they don't come. I hope they don't come and interview me. Hey, we'll get to um, former W. Uh, sorry, former UFC heavyweight champion who's re-signing with WWE. Who the hell could that be? We'll we'll yeah. get to that guy soon enough. Here's a quote. On March 26th, 2020, McMahon sent a lengthy message to Ms. Grant de- uh, describing in detail the circumstances surrounding sharing explicit photographs of Ms. Grant to a former WWE referee, uh, referred to here as WWE referee. I hate to say I'm absolutely sure I know who it is. I'm not going to mention the name. McMahon described how WWE referee left to masturbate over these photos and told Miss Grant she had made a perfect stranger very happy. Now... <clears throat> We are going to get to what you know we're going to get to. But Mann also alleged, uh, allegedly maintained total control over Grant's personal and professional life, non-sexual text message, etc. And then he cajoles her, he being Vince, cajoles Miss Grant into a threesome with physical therapist by saying, if you, I've already sorted this out, I've already booked it. I'll lose a friend over this if you don't do it. And then when she still says no, Vince says, I love you. And then that's the first time he's ever said it to her, and then she agrees to do it. Then there's this headline-grabbing story. Here is the quote. Early in this threesome encounter, McMahon immediately directed Ms. Grant to lay down on her back in a supplicant position. While straddling over her, McMahon defecated on Ms. Grant's head. McMahon left to shower off, but he instructed Ms. Grant to remain in place with excrement in her hair and to continue performing for his friend. While Ms. Grant's request of protection, none was offered. McMahon and physical therapist actively continued with the threesome and directed Ms. Grant's sexual performance for around an hour and a half while she was left covered in feces. Following the threesome on May 11th, 2020, McMahon sent an explicit message to Ms. Grant that further detailed his fantasies of seeing her engaged in sexual relations. What the fuck? What the fuck is right? What if you was, wait a minute, put yourself in the place of that third person. Vince takes a dump on her head and tells you to keep going. I said, wait a minute. I'm not a fan of that. I don't know if I can continue this. So while he went to take a shower, why was he taking the shower? She should have been taking the shower. But what I'm saying is, I'm reading this, and when I read that, I went, what the hell? Now, who could do an hour and a half? Because he didn't say how long the activity went on after the alleged dump. But, And that's why I'm saying, if this is made up, I don't think a damn fiction writer could make that up. So, but it's in there. So apparently, I don't know. I wasn't there. So it it had to happen. Or how 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 would she even think of that? I don't know. But that's what made me think. There's a lot more to this, and than what just you're just reading the headline. Continue. Yeah, I cannot. That's hard. That is hard. It's just out. Uh, do you like? <laughs> hold the shit in and then think here's the time I planned it do you think it was on the spur of the moment no and it's like I'm okay, got everybody one everybody who knows Vince knows he has a poop fetish hence kiss my ass on TV remember that mm-hmm. and you tell him a shit joke oh he he, he loves it He likes that more, and he'll always laugh at that. That's always, like, been one of the undercurrents in the the dressing rooms that he he likes shit jokes. So, again, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I'm not doubting there's a lot of truth into this. So, let me ask you this. I don't think they're going to have a trial. I don't. I think they'll settle this. 
because I think the damage is already done. A lot of people are afraid their names are going to come out too. And I think the prosecution or the, the plaintiff, they hadn't started interviewing any of these people. They know who they are. She knows who they are. They just didn't name them here. But when they start calling them out of that office to interview, that's when the panic's going to set in. Because I don't think, I, and, and the next question is, how many, were there any wrestlers involved in this? Wrestlers had to know about it, the top ones anyway. I never heard anything about it, but I, I did hear about how Vince was around some of the, the girl wrestlers, the divas. They don't call them divas anymore. But he would he would have them sometimes like in a manic state. They would come out of the room sometimes with him shaking. And then they would go and sit down in the corner and not talk to anybody. But you could tell something happened between them that upset them. You remember the, the story about Ashley Mazzaro? Was that her name? Masaro? Yes, absolutely. Mazzaro, yeah. And she ended up killing herself, correct? Yes, she did. In 20, I think maybe 2019. It was a few years ago, but yeah. I mean, we don't know if it had anything to do with Vince, but uh, uh, Paul London said some time ago that she uh, used to confide in him that Vince would attempt to get in her hotel room quite a number of times or like uh, cajole her into getting on the company jet with her, uh, with him. And she didn't want to. She wasn't having any of it. And then you get in that position where you're getting paid a lot of money. This is your dream job. And I suspect for Ms. Grant as well, this is your dream job. And then the boss himself is ruining it for you, putting it, putting you in such a difficult position, a supplicant position in... in, in literally in that sense, then what the heck do you do? Do you sort of put up with horrible treatment and continue living out, quote unquote, your dream or what you thought was your dream and keep cashing checks because you don't know how much longer it's going to last? See, I think they've just turned over the first page of this. There's a lot more stories that's going to come out now, especially with social media and podcasts like this one. Mm -hmm. People will tell stories. And I think uh, I think Vince, even even when Endeavor took over, they said, you know, the, the talk was, is he gone? Will he be gone? And I knew he wouldn't be gone. He's just not going to throw in the towel. And I think, I, I, how much did you think Vince knew this was the end of the line? <sighs> even when Endeavor was buying it. I think now, he possibly. made seven. He made he made seven hundred million dollars. That's what he sold it for. No, 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 no. He didn't make seven hundred million dollars. He sold twenty five percent of his stock in WWE and TKO for seven hundred million dollars. He still got. He still got at the moment two billion in stock plus in the company. There he still has it. Oh, yeah. he's off the board now. He's so, resigned. Yeah, but. but how Okay, then how much power does he have? Well, he's probably got voting and power. Voting power. If he sold 25% of, let's say, he had 16 18%, he's probably got voting power of 12 13% now. So he can't do anything, really, if everyone votes against him, or the majority. Mm -hmm. do. Well, I want to say fascinating story, but it's really not. It is something that does grab people's attention. And now why, why did, uh, what was this? Why did the slim Jim people pull out of the, well, pull out of the sponsorship? He's a, shit, he's a shit weasel who apparently rapes and craps on people, women's heads. I mean, alleged, allegedly. Alleg yeah. I mean, fuck, would you want sponsor? Allegedly. That? You gotta, you always got to, Put that word in there. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly, allegedly. Oh, here's something else, allegedly. A common theme here is that Vince, <laughs> and I mentioned this before already, Vince's fantasies seem to involve having one or more men, threesomes, foursomes, whatever, being involved in this relationship, including a text message here. Uh, I've not got the quote for the text message, but he wants to 
all the details of Grant's sexual liaisons with other people she's directed to sleep with, or that he fantasizes about a giant black man gangbang uh, that, for some reason, doesn't actually feature Vince at all in the fantasy. He's fantasizing about other people, you know, basically gangbanging his quote unquote girlfriend. I'm not even sure he's in the room in he in his fantasy. It's bizarre. Uh, throughout the lawsuit, Grant describes a litany of stress-induced medical issues from panic attacks, weight loss, losing her hair, PTSD and severe depression, to physical injuries to her body, both internal and external, including uh, overly... Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask you this. Yes. Are there any doctor's records of this uh, to prove this? It says document one filed 01-25-24. No, sorry. That's a copy and paste of what was at the top of the page. But she was going to his doctor. Yeah, I wonder if that doctor would give the medical records. Well, he would have to if it was subpoenaed. Yeah. He, he'd have to give it. But if he's Vince's doctor, he wouldn't. I don't think he would say that this was caused by this and this and this. He wouldn't name any names, but he, he'd have to name the injuries or what the problem was. Mm -hmm. But it's Vince's doctor. Part of the control. See what I mean? Part of the grooming. Yeah, part of the it's control. Just... Part of the isolation. Mm. So even someone you'll supposedly be able to trust, your doctor, works yeah, for Vince. He... Well, he separated her from her support system. Well, if yeah. she had one at if she, if she had one at all. Exactly. She didn't really have one. She said both her parents had just died and I don't yeah. I don't know this woman. But I would think she would be a little mousy, like a shy type girl or lady and i think vince scared her to death literally scared her to death her both or both their parents were gone right mm -hmm. she didn't have any kids i don't think so no apparently not a lot of friends so i don't know i'm going to give you another quote and this now brings in your old friend, he isn't your old friend, John Laurinaitis. So, on or around December 29, 2020, a threesome was arranged between McMahon, Laurinaitis, and Ms. Grant at McMahon's condo. Shortly after meeting Laurinaitis, Ms. Grant asked him if she was the first woman whom McMahon had introduced him uh, to in such a setting. Laurinaitis failed to respond and shot a look directly at McMahon, who quickly intervened by kissing uh, Ms. Grant and initiating the sexual encounter amongst the three of them. So, it is implied or i'm inferring that this isn't obviously the first time they've caught a girl in their web in that sense i'm going to carry on with more johnny ace stuff vince then starts farming grant out to johnny johnny ace negotiating regular times grant had to service law and on uh <clears throat> Excuse me, coughing. Mostly revolving around Grant going to Johnny's hotel room and euphemistically uh, serving him breakfast. Her being the breakfast. Grant is then transferred to talent relations, working directly under Johnny. Grant does not want any of this, especially McMahon forcing Grant to apprise him of all encounters with Johnny. So, so, so McMahon is getting his jollies by proxy, essentially by being described afterwards. Here's a quote again. On numerous occasions, Miss Grant was directed to visit Laurinaitis at his hotel room uh, before work to serve himself as breakfast. These devastating experiences made Grant feel as though she was being pimped out as an object for sexual gratification for a new boss. Upon information and belief, corporate funds from the WWE were used to finance Laurinaitis' hotel stays when these coerced sexual encounters occurred. And this, this starts playing into sex trafficking because she is being made to go places essentially to service other people that she says she doesn't want to now let me ask you this did yeah. she ever go over state lines to do this did she travel to the shows that's a good question so that's a violation of the man act yeah she uh, she is invited to a wrestlemania early on i think this is before a sexual uh relationship is uh comes to the comes to the fore with her and mcmahon uh, i think she does go to maybe a pay-per-view or two. Uh, I don't have everything in front of me to confirm that, but there's one bit where Vince says she she can either have sex with him in the car or his office, and she doesn't have a choice. So, hey, that could have gone from Connecticut to New York State, for all I know. Mm-hmm. 
Johnny Ace. Good, good reasoning. Yeah, thank you. Start in New York, finish in Connecticut. Yeah, or stop in Connecticut. John Laurinaitis. Now we spoke, or you spoke about John. It brings up another question. Isn't he married to the <clears throat> Bella Twins' mother? Oh, yeah. He was married through and, the entire deal. Uh, the, the entire time during all this. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine what's going on in that household now? I can't believe I wonder, they've not divorced but, yet. But the Bella Twins had to hear this too, didn't they? They'll, they'll have been rumors. You heard the rumors at the time while you were there. I'm sure there were rumors floating around Johnny that he was a... Well, not not about this, but I heard about you know his, his dalliances with, with females. Yeah. And, and mm. the Bella's in the women's locker room. They'll yeah. have probably heard it before you did. Mm, they did. Mm. That's where I heard it. So it, they had to hear it first, and then it filtered down to me. Now, whether anything changed or not, but it still concerned Vince and women. Mm -hmm. That wasn't his wife, so. Did John Laurinaitis, because you were in WCW with him like in 1990. I spoke to Shane, and Shane said he was always, to use his parlance, he said he would have screwed anything that moved. He always well, had that he was, he was Shane's he was Shane's partner. Yeah. They rode the skateboards or whatever they did. Mm -hmm. But I, I've never been close to John because, again, you know, when you get around certain people and they give you certain vibes, you kind of want to, I've always had that ability, I think, even when I got around Vince, you know, I've said, I said this before at the start of the, the podcast that he put off a vibe that I didn't know how to interpret and he made me feel uncomfortable. Johnny Ace is the same way. He put off a, an unusual vibe. I didn't know him to have a lot of real friends. Not that you have real friends in wrestling anyway. <clears throat> but he, he seemed like to me a hard guy to get to know he, he, if you wanted to know him. Vince is the same way. So when I get those feelings about people, I kind of keep my distance from them. Of course, it's not hard to keep your distance from Vince because he's, he's protected by a line of people standing outside his door. And when he's walking, he's always walking with several people around him at all times, even at the matches. So this doesn't surprise me about Johnny, John, John Laurinaitis at all. Uh, leaving, I, I don't know how specific you can get, but leaving out names, anything specific that you heard about John during his time as VP, talent relations VP? Well, yeah, I used to talk to the girls, and some of them would be not in a manic state, but kind of panicky. I'm not going to mention any names. And they would say he just gives them the heebie-jeebies or whatever that means. A really, really, and you can tell when a female is kind of scared, especially in the fear that he's going to ask them something or try something or try to kiss them or feel them. And they, that's why they try to keep, keep their distance from him. So I've talked to a couple of them. Not long after they talked to him, he'd call them in a little room like Vince would. And they would come out. Not that I was standing there, a guard at the gate. But they would say they would stay in there 10 minutes or whatever. But when they come out, they would be, a, they would be like a panicked, kind of, you know, uh, upset, nervous. And some of them would just go sit down and not talk to anybody. And they would sit there and, and what they were doing, they were trying to sort it out in their head. What, what had happened and what's going to, what's going to happen because now this guy who is their boss, basically, or he's over them, what they're going to do without getting, you know, in the rest of minutes, I say, without getting heat on them. You know, if a guy makes a move on you, I, I would assume, I, I never made a move on a guy, but, but you know, he, he makes a move, and then he's, he's, he's rejected, he's rebuffed, now he's pissed off. How's that going to affect the girl's career? Like they may want to do something with her, and it, it, he's not a supporter of her, and he said, I, I, I wouldn't do it with her. And he may keep her from, from advancing. So, 
when they came out, they was not only concerned about the what he had said or what he had tried to do or what he did, but they were concerned about their career, and rightfully so, which goes back to the problem that I asked at the start of this podcast. Why didn't that Janet, what's her last name, Grant? Yeah, Janet Grant? Janelle. Janelle Grant. J Janelle Grant. Why didn't she say no? Because she was scared of losing her job. Said she was down her luck anyway, broker and the old saying, broker than a broke dick dog. I mean, that's, that's pretty broke. And she needed the job. And she got a And this is another thing that I'm thinking about. Who was the friend who introduced her to WWE or to Vince? I think, Anybody know? I think it was originally one of Vince's personal assistants or something like that. So they had a direct line to Vince, but it wasn't through like the wrestling division in that sense. I see. So... Heck of a friend. Yeah, this th this goes deeper than what we're even taking it now. I mean, there's a lot of people in that company. And I did talk to a guy that is in WWE now. And I asked him. I didn't ask him any specifics or anything because I didn't want to put him on the spot. But I said, what is the mood in the in the dressing room? And he says it's 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 lit up because everybody is not talking. I mean, out in in open in the open in the forum, but they're talking individually. Like what the fuck? And their reaction is the same as our reaction. It's almost unbelievable. Some of the things that happen, but knowing Vince, and I know him from a distance. But it sounds, and that old saying, where there's smoke or fire, we already said that. But I, I think he did all these things. I mean, I can't say yes, I can't say no, because I wasn't there. But from a distance, I'd have to say, yeah, I can believe he, because he's just, he just a weird guy. And he did a lot for me. I like Vince. You know, as long as I'm doing business with him, I may, may not like him as a, as a person, I, I don't know, but, and I don't want to say anything bad about him, but, and, but I've heard him described by people who hate him as, as a bad person, just a bad person down in his soul. That's what they, and they, they may have felt the same thing I felt, but they were closer to him and they, they probably ha had a deeper feeling for him than I did. But I'm going to have to say right now, he look, it's not looking good for him. Now, if they do have, say, this is a civil suit, do civil suits have trial juries? Can do, yeah. I think, it, I don't know if it depends on the country or how big of a settlement that there could be, but I think so, yeah. Okay, if you had to guess right now, I'm saying I don't think it ever go to trial, ever. I think they'll make her an offer that she can't refuse. He has unlimited money. So this is what I think that's, that's going to happen. They're going to offer this settlement and she'll take it and it'll be sealed because now endeavors on it. Now endeavors, that's more unlimited money. So who, who knows? See, he promised her $3 million to sign the NDA. Correct. Then he gave her a million. Yeah. And then he just didn't even bother with the other two million at all. Didn't even get in contact with her. No. Do you know why? Supposedly. Is, why? Is because shortly after the NDA was signed and the first million was sent, I think we're talking two months about their WWE board of directors gets an anonymous email with the probably the bare bones of the allegations herein. And then Vince has probably reasoned, well, she's emailed the board of directors, she's broke the NWA terms. But here's the problem. An NWA, uh, and I keep saying NWA, it's a wrestling podcast, I'm sorry. An NDA. <laughs> Non-disclosure agreement. A non, yeah, a non-disclosure agreement is null and void if it's used to yes. conceal a criminal act. Like Yes, it is. I read that too. It's, it's illegal. 
So it's, it's, it's bullshit in the first place. It's not worth the paper it's written on. Well, this is, what, uh, this is what WWF started this. They would give you a piece of paper to sign. And you're, you're told if you don't sign it, you don't work here, period. A lot of guys needed the work so bad, needed the money so bad, they needed a job. They just go ahead and sign it. I did the same thing. You know, sign here. You know, and you think you're signing like a employment form or something. Of course, that, that's my fault. That falls back on me. But, and it was probably what uh, what they were said. She was, but if he'd have kept his agreement, do you think he would have kept his agreement? Had it? Did she leak it to the board first? It is mostly suspected that no, she didn't, because so many people knew. Because old gobby Vince McMahon can't stop telling people and forwarding pictures and letting <laughs> WWE referees masturbate over them in a darkened room. But hundreds of people knew. Hey, I, I worked around these people. You're making them sound like a bunch of perverts. Yeah, Wait a minute. They, they might, they might they be a bunch, a bunch of perverts. Of perverts. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, but, l- l- uh, let me get to um, the last bit. Of, okay, th- these are basically the worst bits of the John Laurinaitis portion. And... On June 14th, this is a quote again, 2021, Ms. Grant again told McMahon that she did not want to engage in sexual encounters with Laura Nitus, adding, I've left the hotel feeling bad about myself every time. What year is this? This is 2021. So this has gone on for a, a decent amount of time now. McMahon two responded uh, with John Laura Nitus's involvement less than two years, but this is two years into the Vince McMahon Janelle Grant uh, relationship. The man responded that the one-on-one encounters could cease, but he expected threesomes with Laurinaitis to continue. The man responded that one-on-one encounters would cease and that he expected threesomes with Laurinaitis. I've just written that twice for some reason. I'm sorry. Um, text messages also say that Laurinaitis is a sloppy drunk and that he can't keep his mouth closed. Like, this is Vince saying this. As we say over here, Vince is all gobshite. He can't shut his mouth about this relationship to anyone who'll He'll listen. But he's bitching about Laurinaitis yeah, talking it, about it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Now, threesome rape allegation. These are the most serious because, as I say before... Now, this is criminal. This is as criminal as it gets because everything else here... This is can this be, where the sex trafficking uh, no. No, charge no, no, no. was brought in? No. Okay, no, go no. ahead. Uh, this is a, that's another a charge elsewhere, I believe. Now... Three some rape allegation, McMahon and Laurinaitis ignored her pleas and brought her into Laurinaitis' office, forcibly touching and undressing her before forcing her to engage in a threesome on a conference table. Miss Grant pleaded no, 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 and please stop. McMahon responded with no means yes. Miss Grant once again told him to stop. Instead, McMahon licked his fingers and penetrated Miss Grant and said, take it, bitch, with each taking turns restraining her for the other. Laura Knight is then joined by forcibly shoving his tongue, then penis into Ms. Grant's mouth. Here is another Johnny Ace rape accusation. During, uh, I think this might even be the day after, during a June 15, 2021 encounter with McMahon and Laura Knight in the latter's office, Laura Knight has shoved his tongue in Ms. Grant's mouth after she pleaded to stop the whole encounter, then unzipped his pants and shoved his penis into plaintiff's mouth. And here is a Vince McMahon rape allegation. Now, obviously, uh, other prior to what I'm reading... I'm sure a prosecutor can say it's a grey area or she said yes or she was eventually convinced and consented. These are all stone-cold rape allegations. But man rape allegation on June 23rd, 2021, around 11.42 uh, a.m., the man directed Ms. Grant in the middle of a workday to meet him on a lower floor. When Ms. Grant arrived, the man led her inside his private locker room, locked the door and forced himself on her over a massage table. Later that day, a $15,000 a uh, gift card to Bloomingdale's were purchased at McMahon's direction and delivered to McMahon's personal assistant to Ms. Grant in her office. Now this, uh, and also, I'm sorry, I'll finish with this. Johnny Ace's wife on multiple occasions. 15,000 gift certificate. Yeah, oh yeah. But that's like, how many times have you heard like abusers in like a domestic relationship, you know, the man hits, well, probably the woman hits the man as well quite a lot. Uh, you know, it's not all one way, but a man hits a woman and then the next day says, I'll never do it again, buy some flowers and that kind of thing. It sort of reeks of that. But uh, I'll finish with this and then I'll throw it back to you. Johnny's wife 
On multiple other occasions, while Ms Grant worked under Laurinaitis, including after McMahon's promise that one-on-one encounters would end, and even after his wife moved across the country to join Laurinaitis, he would call Ms Grant into his office, lock the door, unzip his pants, and instruct Ms Grant to perform oral sex. Okay, who moved across the country? Johnny Ace's wife. So she moved from where to where? Probably California to Connecticut, I imagine, something like that. Okay. And it still went on? Yeah. Allegedly. As we well, say. That, that's between them, but I don't know. It just reads bad. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it reads bad, and it, it reads uh, sleazy. Let me say that. Now, we're going to go to... Quote unquote, WWE superstar, described as a former UFC heavyweight champion whom Vince was trying to re sign at the time in 2021. And I highly doubt it was Cain Velasquez. And I'm not saying who it was, but it also should be noted that Brock Lesnar is not going to be appearing at the Royal Rumble all of a sudden tonight as we record this. And now, when did they announce that? Yesterday? The Friday? No, they announced that. That's break. Uh, a PW Insider announced this very recently, saying that Brock Lesnar was scheduled to be at the Royal Rumble. Now he is not. So, mm. interesting. Anyway. You know, they're going. To, aren't they going to have a press conference right after the Royal Rumble? If they wouldn't, if they had any... No, I think they on. might need... I think they might need to cancel that one. I think so. So, let's call him WWE Superstar. On or about July 12th, 2021, McMahon directed Ms. Grant to create personalized sexual content for WWE Superstar. McMahon shared the photos with WWE Superstar and then informed Ms. Grant that he likes what he sees. Prior to a business dinner with McMahon, WWE Superstar made a brief visit to Grant's building. However, WWE Superstar did not return to the building for a sexual encounter because he was too intoxicated and taken back to the plane. Now, <laughs> This is astonishing. This all goes to WWE Superstar. Later that evening, Mr. McMahon recounted the story about his dinner with WWE Superstar to Ms. Grant. He sought to salvage the night with a request that they role-play a sexual encounter in which McMahon acted as if he were WWE Superstar. McMahon was so physically rough with Ms. Grant that during the encounter, Ms. Grant begged McMahon to stop numerous times. Another rape accusation there. Including the uh, loud cries of help, I'm serious and I'm scared. As he, among other things, penetrated her, fisted her, pulled her hair, pinned her, shoved her, and open palm slapped her. McMahon's assault caused Miss Grant to break down weeping and curl into the fetal position with her arms pulled to, up to protect her face. McMahon alternated between slaps and shoves before admitting that, I'm really fucking up with you right and left tonight. Huh. Um, I'm going to add one more thing about WWE Superstar and then throw it to you. McMahon texted Ms. Grant a reminder that she was an enslaved object to him. Quote, I want to drive you lower and lower, so low that you might beg me to sell you. And then one more thing about WWE Superstar is, I'll just make this quick, is that the uh, set a play date, then COVID hit again. And then Grant used that as an excuse to back out of it. But she was cajoled, allegedly, into sending a video to WWE Superstar of her urinating. And there is a text message from WWE Superstar to Vince McMahon to Ms. Grant detailing uh, that Vince had thrown Ms. Grant into the bargain to re-signing WWE Superstar. Well, this is from from her side, her perspective, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, again, I don't know if it happened or not, but I don't think you can make this stuff up. I mean, I don't think she's that creative. She should be a cre- she should have been on the creative team more than anything else. Because the thing with the dump and the thing with, you know, the the last thing you read is it reads like a fiction book. I mean, I don't think she's that talented. I don't think the lawyer she had could make it up. And we go back to that same say again, where there's smoke, there's fire. And it, 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 if Vince didn't want anybody to know it, he wouldn't have. T- he wouldn't have took pictures. He had to know that's a. And he wrote her these text messages. Messages can be corroborated, correct? Uh, yeah, I hope so. I here's the one thing about text messages is that I'm sure they were all screen grabbed from her phone, 
but to absolutely be sure, we need to make sure they came from Vince's phone. And but don't they I, have a rec? Don't they have a record of this? I'm sure they're looking into it right now. The the phone. I think they've already looked into it. I think they need Vince's phone to corroborate, make sure the text messages left it. But yeah, I wonder if they can. But compel. okay, even on her phone, wouldn't it? His number appear on there. Now, the, now the prosecution could argue that the number was spoofed. Now I'm acting like prosecution. Yeah, could. Which, Could be. Which basically means you can put anyone's number in there or pretend to be anyone's number and push it in. I doubt. Yeah, but from his phone records or her phone records, you can't you can't spoof that from a record if you, the phone company sends it to you. I hope not, but I think to make sure they'd need to compel Vince to give up his phone to confirm. So they hmm. need to get very legal with that, in that sense, to confirm. How long do you think this will hang around? Years. Years. You think so? I don't think so. Hey, Vince is 80 now. How long can it hang around before he just kicks the bucket? I th well, and I think his mother lives like to 100 or something. Yeah, but see, she didn't have the pressure of this on her. Now he's got this. Now, I think even more than the company... He wants to salvage his reputation. But I think that is unsalvageable at this point. I don't think. I think anybody that looks at Vince now is is going to think of this. A rapist and a shit freak. Yeah. And John Laurinaitis can hang it up. He's already done there anyway. And I don't know what kind of severance pay he got from there, if he got anything. But I'm sure he did if Vince had anything to do about it. He's still trying to... And... John could he could even turn on Vince and save his own ass. Hmm. I mean, you're gonna have a lot of rats back and forth, and you know when they're Vince is the one they want to get. He's the one. That's what she's going after. And I don't know if she's the way you describe it. He couldn't pay her the other two million because they were already on to him. No, uh, the way I've described it is that he may have not paid the other two million because the board had already been made aware of these allegations and maybe Vince blamed Ms. Grant for leaking this information and therefore decided not to pay. Okay, so out of vengeance, I, he's, he was mad. Screw her, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Exactly. And I can understand that reaction too. But you don't pay somebody millions of dollars if they don't have something on you. Yeah. And he paid something like 17 million or 19 million. I, I guess if he paid the other 2 million, it would have been 19 million if they don't have anything on you. And I, I, how much did you think Endeavor knew about this? They had to know about it before they entered the deal, don't you think? I think the board knew far more details than were released and then went and and then when Endeavor uh, and, and WWE merged, I'll guarantee that like Ari Emanuel and some of the other higher-ups, and Nick Khan, knew far more. But I don't think they knew all of this. I don't think they had this level of detail from any of the accusations, I imagine. Oh, well, I don't think anybody can explain this from Vince's side. Because he just, it sounds bad, it is bad, and the sponsors, I don't think they want to be associated with it. I don't blame them. But I think they got to Slim Jim, but said, okay, he's, that may have been the reason he resigned. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think we'll come back if he goes. He, if he will announce, he's resigning. See, there's a cause and effect in all this. Everything that if you back it up, I haven't done it on a timeline. This happened. Why did this happen? Why did Stephanie all of a sudden just quit? She knew. She now absolutely she knew. knew. Because she was on the board and everybody knew anyway. And she must have known enough to not want to get that stink of being associated with a dad. On Why it. did Kevin Dunn quit? Just because he had a lot of heat anyway. But he said, well, hell, this is a Perfect time to quit. And probably got a hell of a severance package. Yeah, I think he's worth nine he figures. I bet he's worth nine figures. He's got stock options. He's paid very well. 
he'll, he'll be worth $50 million plus. So, but if you do a cause and effect on a timeline, this happened because of this leaked here and this leaked here. And, and I think, uh, Triple E got into power a lot easier than I thought he would. But they had that own Vince because I don't know if they threatened him or whatever, but it all came down to that this is going to come out. So I wonder if, if it, he had, did, how much notice did you think Vince had of this or his attorneys? The day. Uh, ah, well, I believe the board was – here we go. Right, uh, I will get there in a very brief thing. Let me just get through this. Another sexual assault from Vince McMahon. NDA uh, cajoled, finally signed, gets paid a million up front, et cetera. News of the NWA – quick uh, NWA, uh, NWA, I keep saying NDAs – quickly reached the WWE board on March 30th. So this is about two months after the NDA signed. Ms. Grant's counsel received a call from McMahon's attorney advising that there had been an anonymous email about the relationship between Ms. Grant and McMahon and Laurinaitis later in June and July 2022. Stories were published regarding the matter of McMahon's multiple NDAs with various women associated with WWE and others. Miss Grant did not receive... Wait a minute, it, it named the women? No, it did not name the women. Although one, it really left absolutely no doubt of who it was. But um, no, they have not named any of the women. I mean, you can't, because they're... Uh, I suppose they're classed as victims, even though there's not been a criminal conviction. This is a mess. Yeah. Let me get through the uh, last bits, and then I'll ask you a few questions to finish up, and then we'll get through. Then we'll finish up the podcast. Now, as we said before, Vince paid one million, didn't pay the other two. Uh, legal jargon here, detail within the NDA, NDA signed by Ms. Grant McMahon and WWE was entered in through coercive tactics. As we said, legally, you can't use an NDA to cover up criminal enterprise. And they also say that the NDA's language is overly broad. And the example I was given is that the NDA says you can never mention WWE or Vince McMahon to anybody. So how the hell is she meant to get another job? Like, you've got to yeah. put them as a reference. Yes. So anyway, it's overly punitive, essentially. The board eventually removes Vince McMahon, as we know. He then gets back in to the, uh, into power by saying that you can't sell WWE without my say-so, and that's how it gets back into the company. And then he is left again. Now, we've talked about Stephanie McMahon. You probably want to See, talk so, about... So Vince thought he had the upper hand in all this. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, I'd, I'd say he's arrogant enough to think that he'd get away with it again and again and again. Mm, Sounds crazy. like he got away with it so many times before. Uh, we've talked about Stephanie McMahon. Uh, did you want to mention the Donald Trump connection? Well, people hate Donald Trump. He has a percentage of the American public. They hate that guy. But he was such a good friend to Donald, I mean, to, to Vince. I wonder, and his name's already been mentioned. They just don't have anything to back it up with. So I'm I'm sure if they're going over Vince's phone, he's got a few texts in there to probably to Trump too. So I think if they can tie Trump into this, that gives the left me uh, wing media, I mean, just clickbait out the yin yang, and they will wear it out. And by the time it's over, they'll think the Donald Trump started it. Because Donald Trump, you know, to the to the U.S. media, they all need to sit down and write him a check for like ten million dollars because that's what he meant to them. Well, he just lost that's eighty million. something million, didn't he? A couple of Who's days this? ago, Donald Trump, he lost a libel case. No, one hundred eighty, uh, eighty million. Yeah, eighty three million. And guess how much she's going to see of that? Zero, because he'll just wear it out in court. And then by that time, he's got everything, and he'll start selling everything. She won't get nothing. Which that case, don't get me started on that, because that is a really a messed up case. Uh, the judge is against him, and she looks, I don't, I don't believe that woman at all. But anyway, 
getting getting back to to Vince, if they can tie Trump into this, they will. That's my tr Trump angle for the day. With the, uh, you know, obvious connections with you know Trump Plaza and WrestleManias and etc. That you know on screen relationship and off screen relationship. Vince McMahon also lived in the condo uh, that, that keeps coming up in this in a building that Trump owned. Yeah. So there you go. Now, uh, what do you think about Linda McMahon in all of this? Well, she's going to take all of it. I mean, how much do you think Vince is worth? If he sold all his stock and everything, it'd be worth something like three, three and a half billion, something like that. She's going to get a billion of it. This is what I think. Think she'll divorce him yeah. now? I think she will now. Wasn't she in, didn't she have divorce proceedings against him anyway? Or Did no? She? I thought they were just separated. Well, maybe just separated. But, you know, I think Linda's smarter than what they give her credit for. Because she knew when all that other stuff came out about him, how he was, what he, what he was about. And she didn't leave him then. So now this comes out. It's nothing new. It's just... He was just, a, a, I, I think, uh, I, I think uh, Vince was just stupid. He got old. He got stupid. He thought he was, he can't be brought down. Well, he can be. And I think now that now they're seeing it by stupidity. I don't know. Here's Vince. I don't know. If you got all that money, why would you have to do that? Because you can. Because you're he, yeah, hypersexualized. Well, well, because you warp sexuality something, because something it's it's something he's mentally wired differently like when i said i used to be close to him i would feel something that just didn't feel right and i was uncomfortable around him uncomfortable talking to him if we weren't talking about wrestling and i, I don't know it was just it was a feeling I got. I've always had it. So I got it around him, got it around John Laurinaitis and a few other people. And they turned out that my feelings were right, that I was feeling something, but I didn't know what I was feeling. So I just separated myself from them. Of course, with Vince, I guess WWE separated me from them. They just let me go. So, but, you know, I, I I'd, I'd had my little run with them. I'd ride with them, and they got me through a tough time, so I, I appreciate that. But this other stuff, it actually surprised me in the detail of it. And some of the stuff you said were horrific. They are horrific. I mean, I, I even watching a porn movie, which I've never watched, by the way. I just want, no, cool. want, I want everybody to know. But that thing of getting on top of her and doing the dump, that's too much. That is just too, that is, what is sexualized about that, I do not know. But obviously Vince felt a need to do it, so he did it. It's, it's, called, you, it's called paraphilia. You, it's a general term for extreme sex acts like that. Do you know what I mean? It's just something like, I don't know what it is. It's like you must get to a certain point where, Normal stuff is boring, so you keep on doing weird stuff. Well, that's stuff. because he's probably, he's probably, boy, he may be a, a porn addict too. He, you watch it so much, it doesn't have an effect on you. How do you know? Oh, you don't mean me personally. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've read that. I've, I've read that. But I'm sure if you, you if you do it that, that much, after, you know, the effect is like drinking. And then you got to drink a little more and drink a little more and... Your body gets accustomed to it, so it, it doesn't affect you anymore. How do you think this turns out? Well, I mean, how long do you think this story will go on? I think years. I think years. It will go on and go on and go on, and I don't think they'll let up. I don't think they'll let up until there's... I think we'll see more people coming out of the woodwork telling their stories. I think even people who've signed NDAs will just say, well, if that one was unenforceable and it's found to be unenforceable, then mine is unenforceable. And then I'll tell my then, full story. Then she, he, she opened the floodgates. Yeah. They're, they're all going to be coming out. And attorneys and lawyers will be falling over each other trying to get these clients. How does 
one, strike up a conversation with a complete stranger and say, do you know what I'm really into is scat, scatty poo sex. <laughs> How does that come up <laughs> in a conversation? I have no idea. And how do you know you like it the first time? Do you just do it? And I don't know. Sorry. Don't ask me, but I think we'll get some answers to it. Just send it to <clears throat> what's your email address? No, give your email address. I don't want to. No, know. don't give mine. <laughs> don't, don't give mine. <laughs> have, have you ever heard of any wrestler or anyone connected to the wrestling business who is into In coprophilia? That? Yeah. No. No, I thought that was dead people. No, that's something else. No, coprophiliac is someone who likes poo poo in the. Oh, I didn't. Pleasure. Oh, is it? I hope I haven't said the wrong bloody I, word. I, I, I thought it was N E C R O. No, no, no. That's necrophilia, the dead one. Necrophilia, and okay. Coprophilia right. is, is poo poo. Well, <clears throat> I've never known anybody or anybody that would admit it. I mean, I doubt if you would you would admit that in open conversation. Well, people. apparently Vince must have done at one point. It's like, do you know what? I just want to take a big old steaming shit in a threesome. <laughs> what? <laughs> but they must have planned it because, like, the physical therapist named in this must have been into it because you better be into it. And that's got to be a very small percentage of the population who would enjoy that. He must have had a well, conversation beforehand. Well, Vince found one, I guess. Jesus, didn't he just? Um, ha, what happens to the Vince McMahon Netflix series now? How do they, oh, how do it, they film the shitting it, scene now? Well, they keep having to all, add stuff. The Vince McMahon Netflix scene, I think they're going to have to cut Vince out of it. I mean, being a, even seeing it, because, you know, they got to put that in there. That's the high spot of the whole deal. Watch him doing the dump. I don't know. The, how were they going to do it before this came out, though? I, th I, th I think they might still be filming it. It keeps getting delayed, probably because there's still so many yeah, bonkers it, stories. It, they just keep coming up. It keeps going on and on and on and on. I think it'll be a highly, highly watched uh flick on netflix and they just signed a deal with netflix and it's funny this happens right after signing the deal with netflix right yeah didn't they sign that yeah they've signed that signed sealed and delivered so now what happens to this documentary while showing raw every week mm. so uh, there's a lot of questions that haven't been asked that we didn't even ask on the podcast but the, all of them are unanswered because we don't know. This story is still in progress. And where it's going to lead us, we don't know. I think more names will be named. And I think you'll have more divorces out of this. Than it, and some wives find out what their husbands have done behind their back. And it's, it's not going to be pretty. It's not. It's going to be chaos. It's, I'm going to say around the WWE dressing room and WWE Ville. But there's some people like we said that we Stephanie knew, the son knew. And how much did they share this, you think? Much? I mean, how would you like to be Stephanie hearing about her father doing this? I mean, we haven't even thought about that. How much pain is that going to cause? I don't wish pain on anybody. I don't wish pain, emotional pain on anybody especially with someone you love that raised you. And then you find out they're doing this. I mean, they were, they were a mystery to you all your life till you find out. And she was kind of broken in because a, a guy doing a, a, a dalliance with another woman, that's, that's natural. But this is kind of just off the spectrum. You can't imagine this being done. Not your father, but I think he's caused the family a lot of embarrassment, a lot of pain. Linda, too, because she had to put up with it all those years. And who knows what he's done to her? So I don't know. 
but it's a story that's ongoing. And I think that I'll be the first to line up to see that Netflix special. Yeah. See what they say about it. <clears throat> I'll end on this. Where do you think this ranks in the all time depraved celebrity stories out there? Because there's, you know, Bill Cosby, Harvey Weinstein. Um, who was that guy who hung himself in prison a few years ago? Epstein, Epstein. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, where do you think this sort of like goes with all this? Because we don't even know the full scale of this, I'm sure. I'm sure there's many. Well, I think just what we've heard so far, I think it ranks number one. The the thing with, uh, what's his name? You, you mentioned second, Ghosting. Harvey, Ghosting. Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, it's almost, what did he do? Same thing, basically. Basically forced a large number of women and, over the decades oh, to have sex with him. And and look what he got. He got 20 years in jail, right? Yeah. And do you think Vince could get any jail time out of this? If if even half of this is true, he should do, yeah. Do you think he should? Yeah, even if half of this is true, yeah. He's, 80, he's almost 80 years old. Well, so what? I mean, we had, right, did you hear the Jimmy Savile? Uh, story yeah. that was about 10 or so years ago. He was like an English legislator or something? or No. no TV no, no. personality or TV radio? TV personality. He was a presenter and radio uh, disc jockey, etc. And what's the name? Jimmy what? Savile. Yeah, I've read about him. Yeah, he was... Um, I said, that reminds me of James. Oh, I'm sorry. James just because he, Yeah, just because of the uh, English connection. No, well, he's a... Uh, no, he had, uh, say allegedly, I mean, might as well say dead as well anyway, you might as well say it. Um abused over the course of decades hundreds of underage girls and then from that something called operation u tree came out of it It was a, a police investigation scotland yard that kind of thing where they started investigating other people who worked at the bbc as well and a number of um television personalities ended up getting investigated some of them got some serious prison time one of them lived down the road from me is Stuart hall you won't know these names he got uh he got several years and he was in his 90s or late 80s. Another guy called Rolf Harris, who you may know your time, he can, Guru, Down, Sport. He had some like Australian themed novelty songs, at least in the States in the 60s, but over here he was a big TV star for decades. He got, he got several years for underage stuff like that. The way he got caught was that they actually found the original letter he wrote to his victim, his victim's dad, apologizing for what he did. And he signed it. He's a complete idiot. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I can't remember if he's dead or not now, but he's in his 90s now. It's like age doesn't mean anything. It's like if he's done it, he's done it. Regardless of the age, throw him away. But don't you think Vince could buy his way out of this? Or mm, no. I don't, he'll never go to prison because he'll delay it as long as he can until he finally kicks the bucket. If I'm, I think, a, I'm a betting man, I'm going to say he's going to do some time. Really? So you yeah. going? you going to... Is that your position on the hill, right? I think so. Okay, he's going to do time. I'll say he won't do time, but I, I think this goes on another, I don't think it for years. I think it'll go on for another under a year before all of a sudden it just, they, they will be an agreement made and they'll pay this woman off a lot of money and she'll go away. Mm -hmm. Then she'll go and write her story, write her book, do the, Probably should get on the Netflix special, and she has a lot of money waiting on her. So, so does the attorney. And do you know what? If, as I say, even if half of this is true, because you know everything gets sort of like built up to the hilt for these kind of uh, cases, and they all do, regardless of what the charge is or the um, accusations are. But even if half of it's true, bless her, get all the money you can out of this, out of Vince, definitely. I think, but you still can't. You still can't get away from that question that can't be answered. I, I I ask it first when we started the podcast. Why didn't she walk away? And that's the overlying question. I don't care how broke she was. Why didn't she just separate herself from that environment? I think you think she was groomed slowly. You think? Yeah. I think, well, I mean, that's definitely what is alleged in the lawsuits. And it, it, I've given you just the highlights and the worst bits, essentially. The worst of the worst bits. But I've chopped out a lot of slow grooming behavior that, that permeates through the first 
uh, you know, 10 or 20 pages. And then it gets to the really bad stuff and then it ends in, you know, forcible sexual assault multiple times at the end of it. And this is over the course of two, three years. What shocked me is when he open hand slapped her. Yeah. She said. While pretending to be WWE superstar. Crazy. You know, I've always made it a point never to go out with a woman I thought could kick the shit out of me. Mm. I, just, I always stayed around. What if she'd have come up? She'd she'd had some damn training. Bam, bam, bam. Just beat the crap out of him. But it's not a. I'm not trying to laugh at it. This is serious, especially for that lady. And uh, whether it's true or not, I don't know. Draw your own conclusion. But from my standpoint, yeah, I think most of it's true. On that note, we're going to shut down this podcast. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back again on Tuesday with Ask Dutch Anything. You can email questions for dutch at gmail.com. To have your question potentially added to the script opposer to put to the Dirty Dutchman himself, the crafty veteran. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and we will catch you again on Tuesday. We the people. <laughs>